Simon Cowell has the perfect life, right? Professional success, a loving family, and more money than you could comfortably spend in a lifetime. He's got it all. Except he doesn't. Every life is filled with hardship, and Simon is no exception. So I'm going to dwell in negativity for just a little while to detail what has gone wrong in Simon Cowell's life, so that we can all have a more rounded view of the man himself, and maybe enjoy a little bit of schadenfreude. Maybe. Maybe. That's what's hot. Hi guys, I'm Daniel and I firmly believe that all celebrities are just the same as us normal folks. We all have ups and downs and no life is without difficulty. Even Simon Cowles. So let's try to keep things as positive as we can as we go through these hardships. Simon, if you're watching, maybe look away now. Simon grew up in the 1960s in England as the son of a record company executive and a ballet dancer slash socialite. So they were not short of money. But Daniel, I hear you cry. That doesn't sound like a bad thing. Well, for children of rich parents in the UK, your childhood gets a lot worse when it comes to school. Because oftentimes, rich parents aren't so thrilled at the idea of raising their children, so they send them off to boarding schools. You know, like Harry Potter. From the age of 11, Simon attended the private school of Dover College, which, being private, does cost a lot of money. Now, obviously, there's no way to tell you how much this cost in the 1960s and 1970s. But today, if you're boarding at the school, term fees, and remember it's UK terms, not US semesters, so there's three per year, run to around £13,500. So in American money, we are looking at Simon's parents paying well over $50,000 every single year for the privilege of not having to spend time with their child. Simon did not like going to school at all, let alone being sent to a school that was on the other side of London from his home and from his family. He felt like he was being abandoned by them and told them so in some very angry letters. This discomfort with his situation led him to act out and get suspended multiple times and then leave school at his earliest opportunity at 16. Those suspensions pique my curiosity. What is teenage Simon Cowell going to do to get himself suspended from school? Tell his rugby teacher that his pitch was bad? That's a great joke, okay? Singing pitch, rugby pitch. That's the highlight of the video. It's all downhill from here. Pretty good, right? That was really good. <laughs> yeah, pretty pleased with that one. Now Simon, like most people, didn't know exactly what he wanted to do when he left school. He took a series of entry-level jobs, including being a runner on the Stanley Kubrick film The Shining, which was filming just down the road from Simon's family at Elstree Studios. According to his brother Tony, he clashed with his colleagues and bosses, which is no surprise. Knowing how willful and exacting both men are, I think Simon Cowell and Stanley Kubrick sounds like the worst possible combination of human beings, like combining water and electricity. It didn't work out. Shock horror. It's getting much more painful. Soon after, Simon was handed a mailroom job by his dad at EMI, where he worked. But soon enough, Simon thought he was too good for the mailroom and hoped to get a promotion. A promotion that was denied. So he left and then came back. Now that has to sting. To have left after you didn't get promotion says unequivocally that he felt like he was better than the role. And then to have to come back, tail between his legs, oh, makes me uncomfortable just thinking about it. I'm too good for this place. To hell with you all. I quit. One week later. Hey guys, any jobs going? Simon Cowell has never been married. Instead, having a long string of almost relationships. Jackie St. Clair, Sunita, Louise Payne, Terry Seymour, Danny Minogue, Megan Husseini, Carmen Electra. Carmen Electra? My goodness! There are some that would say that true happiness can't be achieved without a committed relationship with a spouse. But those are people who have clearly never seen some of Carmen Electra's pictorials. No, I'm being silly there, but I think that happiness looks different to different people. Looking at true joy as a box ticking exercise rarely ends well. And I think if Simon had wanted to settle down, 
he probably would have done. What doesn't often lead to profound inner bliss is having an affair with your best friend's missus. So let's talk about that for a bit. In 2012, rumours circulated that Simon was having a sexual relationship with the wife of a friend of his. He had been friends with both Andrew and Lauren Silverman for some years, but initially, and hilariously, Simon's lawyer denied the rumours and said in a statement, <clears throat> Any implication or statement that my client is engaged in adultery and has allegedly broken up the marriage of Ms Silverman is not only false, but reckless. Mm. Shortly after, it was revealed that Ms Silverman was pregnant with Cal's child, which means, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, but the lawyer lied. I know, you think you know someone. Just a very quick sidebar here. Isn't someone being caught in a lie one of the most delicious things in the world? They're not having an affair, how dare you? She's pregnant with his child. I mean, I could just spread that on a slice of toast and come back for seconds. Wonderful. Simon and Lauren got engaged last year and all seems well, but they both have to navigate the ominous waters of being in a relationship that began with cheating. Psychiatrist, psychoanalyst and author Gail Saltz, MD, said of the situation, When a relationship starts with infidelity, it certainly impacts trust all around. It's not necessarily the end of the story and it doesn't mean that it won't be able to work, to last, but certainly it is in the mix. The thought that either of you are willing to cross that line, morally speaking. It's not like Sandra Green, mother of Rachel Green on Friends says, She was all, once a cheater, always a cheater. <laughs> the unfaithful aren't destined to remain unfaithful, but it can't be easy for either of them knowing how their relationship began. Just ask Chandler Bing. How can you not trust me? Well, you can understand, given how we started. Oh, wow. I'm re-watching Friends, don't worry about it. I don't like elective non-essential cosmetic surgery. If you've been in an accident, obviously it's a great thing. But if you just want to have a flat forehead and puffy lips, don't bother. It's a waste of time. Because it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside if you don't hugely like the person you are on the inside. One man's opinion, of course. One other man's opinion is that cosmetic surgery is the greatest thing yet invented. Simon started looking like a normal human being, but as time went on, he went through phases of looking smoother and shinier and puffier, and then his eyes went weird, and now he seems to have been able to hit a plateau of sorts, a somewhat happy medium. Is it better or worse than he would have looked had he not bothered and just stuck to moisturizers and such? It's impossible to say, because as soon as you start down that road, you'll never be able to go back. Your normal face is lost forever. The only thing we do know is that people who are genuinely happy with who they are don't have elective cosmetic surgery to make themselves look better or younger. It's as simple as that. Simon, in his older years, has become a big fan of e-bikes. But e-bikes don't seem to be big fans of him. In August of 2020, he tested out an electric bike in the courtyard of his home in Malibu, had an accident, came off the bike and hit the floor. He broke his back in multiple places, leading to a six hour emergency surgery, a metal rod implanted into his spine and months and months of rehab. He spent a big chunk of 2020 at home, in bed, lying around watching TV in his pajamas. So the same as everyone else, but he was doing it with a broken back. Eventually, he managed to recover and get back to the tough world of TV judging, but he never gave up on his bike. Like the partner of an abusive lover, he returned to that which had caused him so much pain, and it hurt him again. In January of 2022, he came off the bike again, this time just breaking his arm and getting a concussion. Simon, babe, we love you and it's great that you're getting out there and not letting your age slow you down. But if you must go around on these electric powered pedal cycles, might I suggest a tricycle? That extra wheel can do wonders for your balance. I'll say this right up top here. Simon Cowell is alive. He's been alive since the 60s and he remains very much in that state of existence but that hasn't stopped several headlines from claiming otherwise. Now, my wonderful colleague Billy has done a whole video on this, so please go and watch that video for more details and compliment him on the exquisitely daring fashion choice of Hawaiian shirt and turtleneck. What? 
is happening. But the crux of the situation is that Simon Cowell, like many celebrities, has been the victim of a death hoax. More than one, in fact. Some of them are just plain spiteful and malicious, born of scumbag YouTube channels who flat out lie to get clicks, even photoshopping his head onto the bodies of people in hospital to make it look like he's at death's door for shame. And others are born of confusion because Simon and Cowell aren't particularly uncommon names. And so there's a lot of Simon Cowells out there, both alive and otherwise. As a reminder, if a big celebrity dies, you'll hear about it from the news or social media, and you won't be able to move for it. Everyone will be posting about it. So if you see one link, especially if it's to a YouTube channel, parentheses videos take a while to make, close parentheses, it's someone looking to trick you into clicking their stuff. Don't fall for it. As unpleasant as it must be for Simon to see reports of his death, he is, of course, the best person to debunk those sorts of reports. Oh my God, I'm dead. Wait, am I? No. Who I really feel sorry for are his friends and his relatives, who no doubt get sent some condolence texts and emails by well-wishers. That's got to feel pretty rough, especially because one day he will die. And at that point, it might be a bit of a boy who cried wolf situation and they might not believe him. So there we go. His life isn't entirely peaches and gravy. So next time you find yourself lusting after his money or his success or the fact that every other contestant on AGT treats him like he's some kind of religious prophet, just remember that every life contains hardships and being richer than God doesn't necessarily make you happy. Let's try and be positive. Let me know in the comments something good in your life that Simon Cowell doesn't have or leave a message of commiseration for him. As we've just heard, guys, he's been through a lot and he can't even cry about it because he had his tear ducts surgically removed in 2014 to make his eyes seem less puffy. That's a lie. Please leave a like on this video. It does help us out a lot. Follow Talent Recap on all social media and visit our sexy website, talentrecap.com, for all of your talent show news and gossip. If you want to follow me on social media, the closest you'll get is my very favorite artist, Not Me, who is on Instagram and TikTok at I am not me, I am art. I'm Daniel Swan. I thank you very much for watching, and now you know what's hot.